now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. We are joined today by Kevin, Alistair, and me, Mitchell, your temporary host. League Dad could not make it. Alistair is unfortunately homeless today. I think that's going to be on everyone's mind. Wondering what's going on with that, so I'll just ask what's going on. <laughs> uh, I am outside the esports arena at my school, and I'm not going to record inside, so I'm currently on my phone. Hell yeah! I mean, gotta it's make it work. Amazing right? that it works that well. Gotta make it work, yeah, right? That's not bad. All right, how are you doing, Kevin? How's life been? You just got back from Seattle. Yeah, Seattle was a little dreary, but I mean, I like the city for the most part, despite the weather. Uh, so that was fine. Besides that, life has been pretty good. Uh, just, yeah. you know, not, nothing special happened. There was no leak happening, so just working and exercising. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, Screaming. I am from Seattle, uh, sort of, kind of. So I do like the city as well. So I'm glad you liked it. Um, mm-hmm. And then what have I been doing? Yeah, I've just been sitting there twiddling my thumbs wondering when Worlds is going to start. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Worlds is starting next week. Uh, Let's get over some new stuff really quick. Uh, Just happened today, just dropped today. Very uh, surprising is uh, Cadrol, the LEC caster, he retired today. Uh, And he's going to be a full-time streamer, uh, do some co-streaming for Worlds, obviously, but... uh, I would say he had a pretty short casting career. I think he only did three years, and then now he's done. He's uh, it's too much for him. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Pretty pretty unexpected. Yeah, I thought he was one of the most entertaining casters, at least in the LEC alone. Um, I think he was very fun to watch when he freaked out and started like cussing or just like doing whatever on air. I think it was nice to have a, a good streamer who is also a caster personality, because usually the streamers aren't casters. Um... And so it's it's a loss. LEC is going to really miss it. But I think we've also noticed that when really good talents leave these major leagues, uh, so far the viewership, I'm, I don't know. It doesn't really change that much. I think people just watch whatever's on and they mute if they don't like it and watch a coast stream. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you ask, LEC is probably not majorly affected. But I hope he gets to coast stream LEC. <laughs> yes. I mean, overall, I think it's unfortunate because he was very good, but at the same time, I'm not surprised. He's going to make so much more money just streaming and co-streaming, so you know, for him, it's definitely more worth it to retire from casting professionally. Yeah, I think from a financial aspect, it's pretty hard to argue against it. Uh, it just sucks because like, we miss those iconic moments, you know? I feel like having a pro, a former pro player be a caster and actually like have relationships with pro players, it's something that we've kind of missed because all of our former pro players who are casters, like Kobe, Jat, blah, 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 you know, like, they're not, they're so far gone from being a pro player that they don't really count anymore, or even Deficio, right, like, it's so, it's been so long since they were pros, or even coaches, or even casting, and making it feel like that, so, mm. I, I, I always loved that aspect about Cajal, where it felt like, yeah, he's a caster, but he definitely still feels like he's, like, primarily a player of the game, and that's something that I think a lot of other casters have kind of missed out on, I'm not feeling. Uh, but you know he's gone, and he'll—I mean, he's not dead. It's weird. It's like an obituary. But he's—he's—he's he's, he's not going to be on the cast, and he's going to be on the co streams. I will probably be watching the co streams quite a bit more now, uh, more so than I did before. But uh, yeah, so farewell to him. He was great. He was my favorite caster. Uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about. Let's let's think a little bit about beyond worlds, not world specifically. But uh, I wanted to bring up the Asia games. That just finished, I think, yesterday, last night as well. Um, and yeah, just to nobody's surprise, Korea got gold medal. And Faker uh, is exempt from the military, just like everybody wanted, just like everybody thought should happen. It actually ended up coming to reality, and he didn't even play in the finals, right? So uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the overall Asian games and, <laughs> uh, you know, Faker and Ruler and all those guys getting military exemption, you know? I think it's a really odd tournament because... China played really bad, guys. They lost a game to Vietnam, and like they won in Game 3, got third place or whatever, but it was like a relatively close Game 3. I didn't see the whole thing. just saw like little bits and pieces on Twitter. Uh, and there's also weird 
uh conflicts of interest i guess i would oh, say where yeah where like knight and 369 are just like or not 369 wasn't even playing but knight was just like well you know kanavi and ruler on my team it'd be real nice to have them for next the next three years so honestly like jdg jdg is the real winners and then i'm really happy that faker can continue playing because the other pros like they're young enough for the most part that they can you know try again next asian games Faker not getting to play, uh, play and I think Kanavi might be old enough too. Faker getting to play more is a huge deal. Dude. When Faker's on stage when it, versus when he's not, viewership tanks so much, right? Both uh, because T1 sucks without him. And two, because he's just such a legend, right? He's the connecting piece between season three and now. That's 10 plus years of legacy. That's even in like regular sports, that doesn't make you like the oldest player in the game. Obviously, some people do like 20 plus year careers in regular sports. But like that, those people are with cement legacies, right? That that's what create the great storylines across different eras. That's why you can compare, like, you know, is Chovy comparable to Faker, right? Is Shahu, uh, um, BDD, etc. Are these people comparable? And then you have literal comparisons happening in real time. So very happy. Um, I think some people were mad because B- BTS, that giant K-pop group, uh, did do their service, but apparently they did it voluntarily. However, voluntarily it is, but yeah. uh, Faker got the exception, so it's good for him. I'm like very happy. I mean, yeah. I, I would pretty much have to echo what Kevin said. I honestly, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to the Asia Games. I didn't watch much of it, so I don't. Well, I didn't watch any of it, so I don't really have anything else to add. To be honest with you. That's fair, and I think that is an addition to itself as a good point, is that I don't know how to watch it. I try to watch it. I don't know how to. I was, I was on Reddit looking at other people. They didn't know how to either, so I think it's cool the Asia Games exists. I think it's a cool idea. It's like all-stars taking to the next level, right, or like uh, East versus West type of stuff. I think it's a cool idea, and I think we should do more of it. I just wish it was easier to watch. Like, I had to go to some bootleg of Freaka stream. And I got like attacked with so many ads. I could not watch the Asian games. I just I just gave up. So I think that in the future it would be cool to see this monumentous tournament actually get some like hype and notoriety and like visibility. Because Faker, one of the goats of League of Legends, just got, you know, military exemption. That's like a big deal in esports, like just period. So it would have been cool to be able to watch it, but I think the actual result of what happened, um, it's exciting, it's interesting. It's a bit underwhelming considering like the rest of the Asian teams that were there was like there's just no hope for you guys. <laughs> like you know, Vietnamese teams or what was the other teams, the Saudi Arabian teams, like there's just actually no hope against. So um yeah, I think it's a interesting tournament that exists, but overall I guess I'm sort of happy with the results. Uh anybody else get clickbaited? There was a one Reddit post that got really popular saying that like um, the Chinese teams were uh, in cahoots with like max fixing and stuff, but it was actually fake. It wasn't match fixing. It was. It was a big uh, shit I post. didn't get clickbaited by it, but I don't. I don't. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, it was a big shit post. It was really funny. It got me. It was like Faker was going to join the Korean military and take over the world or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't hear that in passing. I didn't read yeah. the post because I was like, oh, it's a shit post, and I just yeah, yeah. went on with my day. That was a funny one. That was funny. Okay, a little bit off topic. A little off topic. Okay, well, there's some good, very quick thoughts. All right, now I think we might get some interesting opinions on this next topic. I want to talk about Beyond Worlds is the Mythic Item Removal. It's got announced a few weeks ago, a month ago, is that at the end of this year, Mythic Items are getting removed. So what does that mean? Literally no one actually knows, right? Mythic <laughs> Items getting removed is that Mythic items are turning into normal items. They're getting adjusted. Mythic items are just going to disappear. It's probably some mix of all of those, right? They said Gale Force is probably getting removed, something like that. But uh, what are your over thoughts on what you've heard so far on the mythic items getting removed? Yeah, before knowing like exactly how the replacements will look, I think it's a good change. I think this was long in the making. I was really sick of being tied to just like, you know, build your mythic first or second at best, right? There was literally little room for creativity like you just felt worse and worse as you built legendaries you still could on characters right but it just felt like you were being punished for like using brain cells <laughs> so it's like you're like have two routes um especially if you're an 80 carry you're like oh you know i have to build a gale force sucks <laughs> yeah. stuff like that was just feels bad so i think this was long in the making i'm glad they're doing it um but i hope that they don't fumble the it really badly because they've been working with the mindset right of mythics are like the key linchpin of every build 
And so do they even know how to build items? Like create items that aren't <laughs> based off the mythic system? I don't know. I, I don't think they do. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think it's going to be really bad at first. They're going to have to relearn how to make balanced items. And I don't think they were very good at it before. And it's probably going to get worse. Step one, remove yeah, Death Stance and Hallbreaker. I agree with the Hallbreaker one for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Death Stance either needs but, to be yeah. reworked or removed, or just, like, honestly, just bring it back so it's full, it's only for physical damage. But having it physical and magic damage, you just build, like, Death Stance and then Maw, and you just never died any AP champ ever. It's really stupid. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion on yeah. it. Though, that's, I, that's the, that's the old one, yeah. I think it's overall a good change. I mean, I didn't like the system from its inception, really, and... Pretty much everything we complained about at the beginning when we first talked about this, like three years ago, pretty much all came to fruition. Where <laughs> it's, oh, it's just going to be a rotation of, oh, this is the broken item of the month, and we're just going to build the broken item, and it's just going to rotate through the items. That's exactly what happened. We had to watch the tank ones get removed or like reworked completely because they weren't balanced. It's not fun, mm -hmm. and I'm glad they're going to be gone. Yeah, should be interesting. Uh, you guys got any uh, like just theoretical like fun builds? I had some like just like the funniest ideas of like obviously myth like you know mythic passives and a lot of items are gonna get changed. But like, it, what what kind of world exists if like we get like Gore Drinker and like Eclipse in the same builds? Like that sounds pretty broken, guys. That sounds like. That is an unkillable monster I mean, right there. So the one, we'll see what kind of changes they make. The one for me yeah. is uh, oh Infinity Edge Quick Blades. If you can, oh, if yeah. you can stack I mean, those, that's insane. Yeah, <laughs> bro, Zaya Lucian will be eating good. Uh, they still might have the claws though, where it's like you can only build one of these. The I, I, ones, I don't, yeah. I don't think that will change, um, just because they're not mythics anymore, right? Because when they were both not mythics and they were both legendaries, they still had a. You can only choose IE or Quick Blades, right? That's so it's true, not yeah. like it should change if it becomes a legendary. Unless they forget. <laughs> if they forget the first week, that will be hilarious. It, it would be not worthy. be... I would not put it past Riot to forget <laughs> They're like, like oops. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely, like, there's some crazy stuff, too. Like, I mean, I think primarily about Tank and Bruiser stuff. Like, Jock Show Gore Drinker. Like, pretty much Gore Drinker plus some weird Tank or Assassin Mythic. Toned down, obviously, just sounds insane. I mean, like, I think it just it sounds really. Crazy. I think realistically, bruisers are going to be the happiest about this change. I think a lot of their a lot of their items stacking will be the biggest deal. I think mm -hmm. I don't think eighty carry changes realistically that much, to be honest, because I don't because most of the mythics. I mean, assuming they still don't stack rage blade, quick blades, and IE, those are the mythics. Like you can you never built more than one anyways, and if you can't do it when their mythics get removed, what? who cares yeah i think it, it the thing that may be for adc's opens up is they get to take other mythics that are legendaries from other classes and yeah build those now maybe or something like that mm. yeah so you might go like uh, i definitely feel the same. quick blades yeah. eclipse type thing but i think yeah. when it comes to like straight up crit items i don't think it's going to change much maybe we get like a lethality any carry meta maybe like poke varus comes back we're already seeing the like dusk blade umbral glaive kaisa come out that's Oh yeah. Potentially, what happens? But re just be ready for Draven to run early season. That's my prediction. Uh, yeah. I mean, Draven is picking up a lot of steam now. I think this is a great transition. Let's just talk a bit about like the previous patches, what you've been seeing, kind of like the uh, the meta for worlds. You think is going to go into it? Uh, so you know, we got. Let, let's talk really quickly about that Dustblade Kaisa build. It got a lot of conversation. Um, you build what <laughs> Umble Grave. First into Duskblade, and then you go into your Nashers for attack speed and your other evolves. But uh, I've never seen this build. I've only seen it talked about, and I've seen it talked about a lot. But uh, can someone explain to me what this build is? <laughs> so I'll let you get into it um, because you actually know this stuff a lot more, Alistair. But I've tried it before because I saw a tweet about it like a month ago or a month and a half ago when uh, Duskblade was way, well, actually two months now, I guess, when Duskblade was way stronger before mm -hmm. all the nerfs. And I tried it in ARAM. It's hilarious. Uh, the ISO okay. cues do like a thousand plus damage. You're hard to hit. And you you just, because of the lethality, right? And the interactions, you get to your Q evolve early and you do a fuck ton of damage, right? You're hard to isolate. In fact, assassins going on you is actually kind of dangerous for them. So that's my impression of it. Uh, it. It was good for that. And the invisibility lets you get out, right? So you have your E for invisibility and your alt for invulnerability. 
So I, that that's where the strength is for me. It's very bursty and means you don't have to commit very long to auto attack. But I don't know what to do after the the collector and the friggin' dust blade. So I did Axiomar because it was ARAM, but I don't think that's necessarily correct outside of ARAM. Yeah. <laughs> so my my understanding of the build is it's it kind of piggybacks off of the like Leandri's W Max AP Kaisa. Um, well, not W Max, but like W Second, and mm. which is like the go-to build. And I think the main concept of this build is that it makes your early game much stronger, and you can get Q Evolve early because with the AP Kaisa, you don't get Q Evolve pretty much ever unless you're going Rage Blades at two and a half or three items, and that you only build that if you can actually auto attack. So with this build, you can you pretty much get your W Evolve at the same time. Or maybe a bit later, but you have a better early game, which allows you. Even though you know, if you're going to get your W evolve later, you may get it maybe a bit, maybe around the same time because you get so much more wave clear and you're so much safer because you can just one shot a wave and walk away. Because it still transitions into the full AP, and then you're allowed to just one shot people after. Like you can land a couple Ws and just dive in. Personally, I played one game of it so far. I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, Mm-hmm. But uh, will we see it in pro play? My mm. my prediction for the build is we're gonna see it in play-ins and maybe a few games in uh, group stages, and then people are just gonna realize, huh, this is funny, but it's not good. We're just gonna go back to Leandre's. We're just gonna go back. Like I think we're gonna see it a bit, and then people are gonna realize, huh, this is actually kind of troll, and they just go back to. Mm-hmm. Like the standard that was already a thing that is much better in my you, opinion. You mean Ludens, Ludens, right? Not Leandre's. Um, both. It's both. Both. Yeah. It's. I've literally never seen Leandre's Kaisa, but okay, yeah. sure. Leandre, we'll say I, it's I, both. No, Leandre's is yeah. super really? good. Leandre's is super good because with the uh, the ability haste on the mythic passive, you can actually and the ability haste oh. on the item, you can because of the nerfs to her W or. They made it so it just barely can't reach with the current build. So you go Leandre's, and you can now stack your Ws on top of each other. Interesting, interesting. Well, that is wild. So there's a lot of builds, I guess, I'm unfamiliar with. I haven't been paying as much attention as I should. Uh, something I did want to mention that is interesting about the Dustblade build that is true about previous iterations of, like, Collector Rush or Dirk Rush Kaisa is that, yeah, her wave clear benefits a lot. Your Q starts one-shotting the the waves pretty quickly and you know i think one of the reasons why uh this build is even evolving is because static shiv has been nerfed like four times yep. uh, since playoffs so um mm-hmm. it is interesting that pro players are finding other ways to abuse P- kaisa uh the umbul Gra- glaive early game i'm sure is just because the items kind of overstated and cheap uh it gets you that good early lethality and ad to evolve but very interesting build um, yeah, let's talk a bit more about the meta. So LeBlanc, right, that was a very popular topic, and the guy literally the next day completely axed, like just one shot into the patch notes. So um, <laughs> will we see AD on hit LeBlanc with like this Triforce, uh, Static Shiv, Holebreaker build? I don't think so. Uh, but let's give you guys just like very quick thoughts on what, because this build been around for a bit, right? So what are your I quick feel quick like thoughts? that build is very good. In solo queue, not very good. It's usable in solo queue and like viable, but I, I don't think in pro play you can get away with that level of uninteraction because people force Baron at like 20 minutes and the game ends if you don't have any impact, right? And you don't get that time to... Um, people are more decisive that way, right? So I, yeah. I just don't think so, personally. Yeah, like, like let's try to talk about like pre-nerf and post-nerf. Like how viable did you think was it pre-nerf and then post-nerf? I don't think it's viable at all, so we don't really... Oh, oh, right. That's true. I should have yeah. should have mentioned the pre nerf. Pre nerf. I think it had enough strength where if you knew the matchup, it's a R five, um, R five. It's last pick. Then yeah, I mean, it, it had like a few spots. It could like catch someone off guard, right? If they've never faced it on stage, like yeah, you can play in solo cube, right? But when it's coordinated and you actually have protection for it, it probably gets uber ob- obnoxious. I think right now when it joins the fight, it's just too weak because of the nerfs. So uh, I think pre nerf could have seen it. Uh, as like a catch them off guard sort of thing, probably lower ranked team trying to get a <laughs> get a freebie or a higher ranked team just trying to do a troll thing for a free win. But I don't think it's happening anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty much exactly with Kevin on that. It'll be if we do see it. Even still, I think we there's a small chance we see it in like play ins when we see you know like one of the better teams just play against 
a team who's Myco zero six type thing. Mm. They'll just pick something for fun oh. and run at him. I believe Alistair died, but I think he was just echoing Kevin's statement that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that um, yeah the post. Oh, he's back. That's, okay. that's tough. Yeah. Uh, and he's paused again. But the post nerfs on uh, Static Shiv and LeBlanc probably makes it not super viable uh, anymore. But I'd, I'm going to say, hot take, that I think pre-nerf, the strategy was probably good enough to see quite a bit of pro play, I think. Uh, I don't know if it's like going to define the meta. It might, like When you get later into the tournament, it'll probably like drop off in popularity. But I definitely think even, like obviously in play-ins, but even in like good team against good team early on in the, in the group stage tournament... I think that pre-nerf, that LeBlanc top bullshit was good enough to see just a lot of play. I How good is it? It's hard to say because it's like one of those things that like you get more gold than any other champion in the game, but you're so less useful with that more gold that it kind of evens out, right? You're just a weird poke champion. Um, so I think that it's it, it would have just made a degenerate type of play style. And I don't know how good it is, but I'm glad it's gone. All right, so mm, LeBlanc, yep. top, probably not going to see play. LeBlanc, mid, might actually not see play either because the nerfs they did to her, they buffed her AP ratios, but they nerfed her, I feel like, her early mid-game auto-attacking that was very powerful for just AP LeBlanc that it's going to hurt her laning phase, I think, substantially. Um, so we'll see if LeBlanc survives at all, period. <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest. Last thing I want to ask you guys... Yeah, go ahead. I, say, I don't think she will because Galio is going to be very good. Okay, you think Galio is going to be very good with the small cooldown nerf yeah. on, or cooldown buff on her ulti? I 100% okay. think so. That that cooldown is really big for pro play. It cheats a lot of tempo, and it. May, I mean, we already know how much these teams are going to play around the map. Galio R cooldown's mm -hmm. a big deal, and especially. I, That's interesting. I, yeah. actually, I'll, I'll get to other roles when we get there. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see about Galio. I, I mean, similar vein just popped in my head is the Gangplank. I think Gangplank, 10 second uh, buff on the ulti. That one, I immediately could picture how that just jumps right into pro play. I think mm -hmm. it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really, really strong uh, in this, in this meta, in this patch. And he's going to be, I mean, the, something they need to change about League of Legends. And I think they're doing it in the runes because uh, we're getting a lot of rune reworking as well. Both Conqueror and Lethal Tempo got nerfed in the PBE. But the fact that you can get like nine minute Essence Reaver on Gangplank with no kills, right? It's just for poking, just for farming, just for, for strike and plates and stuff. I think it's too much. I think it's real messed up. I think it's really extreme. So expect to see a lot of that at Worlds. You get a Gangplank with Futures Market first strike, they get a 9-minute Essence Reaver, and you just have this absolute bomb in the top lane for pro play. Uh, so that's definitely going to be hitting the meta up to you guys. Any other things you want to talk about if you want to... I think let's actually focus a bit on the ADC role because we do have Alistair here. Static Shiv got nerfed, and a lot of individual ADCs got tiny bit nerfed in the last three patches, right? Zaya, Zeri, Kaisa... Uh, some other people got very small nerfs to their... Oh, um, I think that was it, right? Most of them. And then Caitlyn got a little buffed, and then some items have gotten mm -hmm. nerfed, like Static Shiv. So. Mm. Oh, Tristana got nerfed pretty heavily as well, as they mm. say. So what are you guys' thoughts about the Marksmans in general? Uh, I think they'll probably... Oh, no, no, ahead. my bad. You, you, you go ahead. I'll go after. I'll go after. My, my quick thing is I think Caitlyn will be good. I think yeah. Caitlyn's been hilariously good, actually, for a while, um, ever since the change to her ult. Making, I know they took a little power elsewhere, but her ult's actually like a thing now. So you know, Maybe this is just me being biased from ARAM, getting more than half health lost to a crit Caitlyn, but I think she's good. Um, she'll be, be able to put even more consistent pressure on them before. The others, I still think that... Mm. I think at least this world's we have so many star AD carries that we've literally seen carry, and I don't think the power level has shifted so much so that they're out of the meta. It's just hopefully Zeri's not in there um, as much as we saw uh, in previous iterations, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think the the shift is enough to knock it off of like AD carry being at least one of the most key parts of the carry uh, equation. So I think Caitlyn will be like sixth, seventh. Eighth string AD carry in the tournament. I do not mm. think she's going to be. She's a gonna, string. Wow. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she's going to okay. be picked very much. I think she's going to be like second rotation of picks, like 
four or five type thing when there's six eighty carry bands. Mm. Oh, okay. oh, so you mean like six, six seven pick? Because yeah. string is like usually like a group. Yeah, sorry, so I, I, like, I, I misspoke. I misspoke. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, wow, what tier is she? Then? No, I no so, yeah, Be, yeah. behind Timo and no. next tier. <laughs> yeah, no, my bad. I, I I misspoke, but yeah, no, no, she'll fine. she'll be like sixth seventh pick. <laughs> Um, okay. best eighty carries. Okay. I mean, I think there's going to be a pretty clear four, and then I'm going to add Aphelios in the side because Aphelios, so we're going to see a ton of him. But best eighty carry overall easily Zaya. Um, Zaya's just yeah, I agree. There's no contest. Mm-hmm. Zaya's the best. Then it's probably Kaisa, Zeri, and Lucian. Is my prediction. Interesting. And then okay. maybe Sivir. Big maybe on Sivir. Maybe. Sivir. I think uh, I think that that is interesting. I agree on the Zaya, mostly because she got some small nerfs to her base kit, but everything else around her got heavily nerfed with the static shiv nerfs, and she didn't build static shiv, so I think that is a big plus for Zaya and a lot of her mm-hmm. other meta matchups, so that makes sense to be a lot. Uh, the Kaisa one, I'm still not entirely sure where she's going to land. She could still be the most popular ADC like she was in playoffs, but I think she could also just like randomly just jump in and out of tournament, maybe, like she could start off really strong, kind of disappear, then come back later in type, type of thing. Because there's so many builds you can go on Kaisa. There's like three, right? Duskblade, there's Navori basic crit, and then there's the AP hybrid version, right? So we'll see about Kaisa. I think she's going to have a very interesting tournament. Uh, I actually think, I um, want to get your thoughts on this, because Ezreal is going to be a big deal in this tournament, actually. I think he's going to be kind of strong. I've been hearing a lot... Mostly just um, Kajrol and his conversations about what he hears, but he thinks Ezreal is going to be pretty big too. Uh, Ezreal, Draven, Ash, actually Triforce users are going to be kind of a big deal for bot lane. Um, any any thoughts on those guys? I mean, mm, I I kind of have a a question mark on Ash specifically. Mm-hmm. I I don't know as much in terms of like just seeing people play Ash and like people being excited to play Ash. So. In my head, I don't, I don't know if Ash is happening, but I do think the other two probably will show up. As, as we're at Worlds, so. yeah, and we have some very good players there, right? Who can rep it? You know, Death comes to mind at least, uh, straight up, and then Guma as well. Well, wait, wait, was Guma the Ezreal player? I'm trying to think of which Korean. Anyways, we had a lot of Ezreal and Ruler or Death. Like basically, if you're an all-time great AD carry, you're probably good at it, um, Ezreal. And so oh, yeah. I think we'll see it. Um, Draven is just more specialist, but I don't think he's so strong that he's non-specialist will play him. There were a few metas where non-specialists would be playing him. I don't think this is one of them. Okay. I agree for the most part. I think Draven's... We, we might see a couple Draven picks because uh, he does have a lot of good matchups. He's good against Zaya, good against uh, Kai'Sa, good against Zeri early. So you can use that to kind of slam bot lane. Um, Ezreal... I'm very torn on because I think he's... I don't think he's great, and I think it's not exactly a great meta for him. There's a lot of tanks right now, especially like top jungle. Like you want Ezreal against Cassante Sejuani is the most useless thing ever. So That's fair. I don't actually think I think Ezreal's strong in a vacuum, but I think in the current meta he's not mm-hmm. great. And Ash is just gonna Ash. I don't think Ash is gonna get a lot of play. I think we'll see a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna be a consistent thing because she just does not do enough damage to burn through all these champs, especially with. A Triforce build. Like, she'll be annoying, but... Okay. Yeah. I, I think we might see a similar position where some games we're just going to see Poke Varus or Ash or, like, Ezreal just to, like, slot it, even though it won't do much against the enemy tanks, is that they'll just do it as, it's a good solid lane, there are enough AD carry bands, and we need utility because we have enough damage elsewhere. So, yeah, that's probably what's going to shake down with some of these more utility-focused. Maybe Jin falls in there, too, because no. he gets some buffs, but probably unlikely. No, Jin, no. Jin, okay. Jin, no Jin at all. Jin's, no Jin. Jin is the most worthless AD carry in the game. I actually think... Okay. I think the More than Vayne? Oh, 100%. Vayne's, Vayne's actually, like, not bad right now. I, okay. I, I, I feel like she got hit pretty hard by the shiv nerfs, but yeah. No, because you just go cracking on her. I think I do want to say I think the sleeper AD carry going into this tournament is Callista. Mm, okay, I've been seeing uh, hearing about her in scrims. Callista's doing some stuff, but yeah, I think uh, I think that I mean I have a kind of a very underwhelming prediction on this tournament as a whole. Beyond the AD carry meta, is that we're going to see a lot 
a variety in the beginning. And then as we go on to the middle and end stage of the tournament, the the comps are going to look almost exactly like they did in playoffs. So we're going to see some spicy junglers. We're going to see some spicy top laners. But as soon as we get to the matches against the best teams that matter, we're back to Sejuani Maokai. We're back to Bruiser tank tops. We're back to Mages mid. It's going to be the same, right? So uh, let's not kid ourselves, right? <laughs> I, I agree for um, the most part. But there's one champion that we do need to mention that I think is going to be very high prior this tournament, and that is Kennen. Okay. Kennen, yeah, okay. Kenan. I think, yeah. Kennen is big, uh, big, uh, yeah, gonna be a big pick. He got individual buffs, and I think one of many of his uh, main matchups did get nerfed. So, Cassante got small nerfs, and then Renekton got a pretty sizable nerf in the 1v1 matchup for MR loss. Uh, so, that seems to track. Yeah, I mean, Kennen was already seeing a decent amount of play. I think he'll see mm -hmm. a lot more play. I mean, we're, Rumble's still going to see a ton of play, right? Rumble's probably one of the strongest blind picks in top lane. Uh, Renekton's still going to see a ton of play, but get punished heavily, obviously, by the Rumble and Kennen stuff and the Gwen stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, any other things you guys want to talk about in the recent patches and in the meta that we might see at Worlds? I mean, Jarvan, but... Yeah, I think Jarvan is going to be that pick that we definitely see a bit more splashed in the early stages and then realize that while Jarvan is very, very strong and good, it's actually just better to play Sejuani Maokai and give them no farm. <laughs> so we'll see, but I think Jarvan uh, will definitely be strong, especially in the early stages of the, of the tournament. I also think it's uh, partially because it, just jarvan Galio combo. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I actually push back against the Galio being that good because I think... Even in his supposedly good matchups, uh, he doesn't actually do that great in mid lane. Like, his side lane control is obviously insane with the ulti, but um, from what I understand is that his supposedly anti-mage like properties, he gets pooped on by Orianna, Syndra, Azir. He even doesn't have a great time against Silas. Um, so, Galio is an interesting one where uh, I don't know how f my willing players are going to be to sack mid lane. To that much, you know. I mean, I so, I think I do think I think what's going to happen is it'll be the same thing with uh, what was it season when did FPX win season nine nine where, 2019, yeah, yeah where yeah. they're gonna you know people aren't gonna want to play it and there's gonna be one team that's just perma playing it and then just stomping with it every game and that's how everyone starts playing Galio. That's the way I think it's gonna go okay. personally. I can see that happening. Um, I wonder if like the rewards of having your Syndra or Orianna sit mid lane and just farm while that's happening, because those champions are insane. They're at the like they're at like I don't know season six, season seven, like one shot like mages are king sort of territory right now. I agree. Where mm -hmm. I think Syndra and Orianna and Azir, I mean he did get a tiny bit nerfed, but I think these champions are so powerful right now. So we'll see what in the meta kind of like pushes against each other and what ends up being the best. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that, but my, my main pushback is, you know, you play Galio, sure, these champs get a lot of farm, but then they get Jarvan or Camille ulted on them, and then Galio jumps on them again. It's like, uh, play better. Like, there's nothing you can really do. Okay, I think that's fair. Yeah, it depends also what comps, right? Because I think uh, Galio and Camille and J4, they work good against comps that have only, like, one to two damage threats, yeah. and you just one-shot them. But if you do have a team, right, I see some teams, they're going to have a Jax top, and then they'll have maybe a J4 jungle, and then they'll have, like, a Syndra mid, and then they'll have, you know, an AD carry. And then there's too many threats for a Galio to actually be I agree. good. So we'll, we'll see where it fits in. A lot of interesting discussion. But let's move past the meta mm -hmm. talk, and let's get into the actual action. Uh, that is World is starting in a week from, what, tomorrow, I think? Uh, uh, we, a week, a week Monday. A week from Monday. Okay. It's uh the first thing we're gonna see is BDS versus GGS. That's correct, right? I yeah. think that's yeah, that's still happening. So I BDS at it versus Golden Nice, yeah. Um who uh let's talk a bit about this matchup. Uh I mean we talked about it a bit before, but we're getting the best of five in about a week, so who's winning it and why do you think so? Just give your quick thoughts. Yeah, quick thoughts. We already said it uh, to some extent before, but it's yeah. gotta be GGS. I I don't think BDS is a real team. Oh. Uh, I think they won. They got here because they had great seeding uh, from before. They had some okay regular seasons, but they had that one really good season. I think that's what carried them to this point. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they did find a regional, but I just think with Adam playing the way he does, 
I think Licorice will may he maybe gets body one or two games, but he's not gonna like he doesn't really like tilt after getting body, so it doesn't matter. Mm. Um I also think that <laughs> I think River's so much better than Sheo, so uh yeah. Those are those are my major thoughts on it. God, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. I I didn't mention Gory for a reason because I have no idea what he looks like right Wait, now. But he is at least back in Korea. That's fine. <laughs> Don't hype up Gory. <laughs> Any thoughts, Alistair? Uh, honestly, not really. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Team BDS, so <laughs> I. All right. You won't need to. Don't worry. They're flip, done. Flip your magical coin. Who is winning? Let's actually get your guys' predictions. I want to see some numbers. I want to see Golden Guardians 4-0 beat it. What's our match score here? What are we thinking? 3-1. This is going to be a game where they snowball. They do their win con. All right. 3-1. 3-0 Golden Guardians. Let's just send it. Hey, 3-0 Golden Guardians. All right. I'm excited. I actually am quite kind of... I mean, I actually... Uh, before we did this podcast, I did watch BDS's series versus Mad Lions in the regionals. Uh, just rewatch the highlights. I actually am a little nervous, if I'm being honest, because BDS is definitely that team that I think in their summer split they kind of looked bad for the most part. But then in that one last uh, series against Mad Lions, it was not that bad. I was like, oh, this is these are, both teams are very scrappy. They're like kind of boneheaded, but. They both kind of know what to do, and they both kind of sometimes have hands. So if we get the version of Golden Guardians that ended playoffs, and we get the version of BDS that ended regionals, I actually think BDS takes it. So in my prediction, I am predicting Golden Guardians. They have to improve beyond what they showed in playoffs, though. They have to play like MSI Golden Guardians or like regular season summer of Golden Guardians. If they go back to playoff summer... Golden Guardians. Uh, I'm actually very worried about them. I don't think they're that good in that version of them. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I think you have a bit of flawed logic. The team that BDS beat was Mad Lions. I'm just going to leave it at that. Mad Lions regionally is a good team, though. They're a very good team regionally. It was not an international tournament yet. I know, so, but it's fun. It's fun know. to clown on them. That, that's all it is. It's just it's fun to let them. It's fun to clown on them. Look, there is one team, or sorry, there are two teams that have. Failed to make it out of play-ins, and Mad Lions are both of them, at least from from a major region. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. That's true. That's true. I mean, I would be much more comfortable if Mad Lions was the one Golden Gardens was facing. I'd be like, oh, easy them. We're chilling. But uh, it's BDS. Unseen territory. I mean, I think for BDS, most of these guys, it's their first time at Worlds. Right? Uh, Adam so. Adam played at Worlds on Fnatic. Adam played once, yeah, yeah, in that disastrous year, right? With Whippo Jungle? Yeah. 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 That was a good time. Good time. And Upset had to leave and stuff like that. Anyways, that's the BDS versus uh, GGS matchup. We're all predicting Golden Guardians. I am very hesitant because every time I've really hardcore believed in Golden Guardians, they've actually let me down. That You know, it always is like, it's good, it's good, it's good. But then at the last moment, I believe in Golden Guardians the most. That's when it actually doesn't work out. So we'll see how it goes. Um... I just hope that Gory, you know, he can just pick himself back up and have a good, have a good series, have a good tournament. Uh, anything else we wanted to talk about? Let's talk about. Oh yeah, I wanted to save this for last. Uh, we're gonna get a little salty here. Um, so they Riot recently changed ranks so that if you are a bad naughty boy and you get banned or something or chat mm-hmm. restricted, you get sent to the other queues in the League of Legends client. And I'm just gonna say, as a person who does not play that much ranked anymore. This is like the worst change I've heard in quite a while. So, <laughs> as our other ARAM enthusiast, Kevin, why don't you talk about this? How does this make you feel? <laughs> I mean, anyone could have seen this coming. We didn't need it to play out to know this was coming. I think that this is just another case of Riot just not giving two shits about the ARAM queue. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, right? They were like totally fine with ARAM queues getting ruined because... Well, who cares, right? They're just ARAMs. Um, I th- personally think that, I mean, you can tell how upset I am about it, but uh, I think they'll fix it. I don't think they want one of their three major modes to be completely screwed over. But at the same time, like, why is it based on winning? Like, it didn't matter what modes it goes to, right, if it was based yeah. on winning. I'm, I'm sure the Red Threat talked about this too, but when I just saw this change, I was like, 
what do you mean play five games? Like, what's the fastest mode? Yeah. And what's the fastest <laughs> way to play five games? I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so this is crazy. I, I don't know how this got through, but I, I assume that they just had to rush this out for some reason. I don't know, maybe to meet some kind of KPI uh, key performance in in Decatur. We changed the game, guys. Look, boss, don't fire me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've made 10 <laughs> changes, right? With impact on 100 million players. Yep, we're doing We good. already have <laughs> follow-up changes in the book, too. Definitely, they shouldn't have, you know, it's not, don't think about they should have been there in the first place. We got follow-up changes. We're going to improve on things. <laughs> uh, what, what they need to do is they need to bring back Crystal Scar and just throw all the toxic players in there when they get banned. I'm down! Where's throw me in there? I'll play Dominion even if it's Toxic Q. I miss that shit. That sounds like a good idea to me. I mean, I'll, my, <laughs> my thoughts on it is, like, very back and forth. Because, on one hand, it's at least something. It's not a great solution, but, you know, it's something at least. Um, yeah. I think one thing they should look at implementing is something that Overwatch has had for a while, where you just avoid as teammate. I think that'd be a great change. You can just have people that you don't ever want to play with. That's my bias. Think, I mean, to be have a long list uh, for a lot of people. Well, <laughs> well, it, well there's it, a it, limit. It would destroy Q times, there's a limit that's though. The you, you don't. You can't. Yeah. I think in Overwatch you can only have like three people at a time. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Maybe it won't. Uh, I didn't avoid anyone in Overwatch because I didn't play that. I never did. I <laughs> never did either. But the Overwatch guys in my school talk about it a lot. They're they're always rotating the three people they're avoiding on team. I, so I think if Riot mm. did like three or five, I don't think it would be that bad. Um, it, it wouldn't be that bad in execution, I agree, but it would break the client. <laughs> well, That's true. <laughs> well, look, well, look, they were able to change, they are able to add emerald borders and change the color of plat without breaking the client. I hope they can add a block list or a, like avoid his teammate list. I, I, hope, I sure hope you're right, my friend. So, so sure do I. I so, so do I. But overall, oh, I... Shit. It, it sucks for ARAM because I've been playing a lot more ARAM this year, or the last couple of months. But at the same time, it'll be nice not having some of these people in games as much. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. They definitely... Uh, the easy change, obviously, is to make it to win games instead of play five games or something. And um, that's good. I also think, like, there's a lot of psychology stuff where it's, like, just, like... Give more, like, time bans. I think a lot of people, they do the rage queue thing, and sometimes you just need to make someone wait, like, 10, 20 minutes in their life because we got some mentally unstable people playing this video game 24-7 all the time. So uh, I think there's a lot of little things that Riot could have done before they made this change and how extreme it is and how, I think, un... Like, just... It's just not a clean change. It's just not well thought out. It's just, like, not a healthy change for so many people where it helps your main rank queue and it helps like your poster child and some of this rift, but you don't need to piss everybody else on your fan base, right. To, to make this one change. They could have done it a bit more elegantly. Um, I mean, they could, I think the biggest thing is, you know, instead of taking away things from people who misbehave, give, they should also add or change to giving things to people who behave properly. See, when you have an Honor 5 token, it says at the top, new Honor rewards will be added each season. Yeah, that was just a lie. There's, ju there's just <laughs> yeah. Grey Warwick and Medieval Twitch chromas. Two terrible no, skins. No, they fixed that. No, they didn't. They, they did. You get, so instead of the stupid token things, now you get like an Honor 5 reward like box or whatever. No, you get that as well. You get, new rewards. You get that as well. I, I got an Honor 5 token like two weeks ago. Right, right, right. So the Honor 5 tokens are still the same thing, but you get new rewards now that are just unique to Honor 5. And Oh, yeah, well, there, there was the Malzahar skin, I guess, but, like... Yeah, you get, so every year you just get, like, a new unique skin made for Honor. I think that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I think that the positive reinforcement thing needs to probably be... I agree that it probably needs to be more incentivized, that there needs to be more positive reinforcement. What we have now is kind of nice, I think, especially because it's a free-to-play game. They're giving us free stuff which is cool and nice but if this game is so huge that if they really want to make an impact and like change its reputation of being an overly toxic cesspool right like the high elo moderation is a very common thing that's talked about and there is a little bit of that i think they implemented but maybe you need to go a bit harder into that 
because it is kind of the backbone of League of Legends, right? Streamer culture, high League of Legends, pro play are the backbone of why this game is successful and why mm-hmm. it's so popular. So I think that the high low moderation, I think that the positive reinforcement feedback is just great in general, but bad business. I think that psychologically, I think it has the best chances of working and making people just, even if you're a toxic person, you just don't type. Like you just wouldn't type at all, right? So, but of course, it's not a money maker, uh, and that's that's where the uh, that's where the instead it's the punish the bad people instead of reward the good people. That's where the money making, My, I think, influence. I, I think the in. things I would probably look at adding is like some like okay, if you're if you're honor five, you can you get like priority queue, like you can get into queues faster. You're taught you're like honor level zero, honor level one, like you have to wait five minutes extra before you queue. That kind of thing, you know. It... That could be really intense. Yeah, that could be very controversial. I think I would be interested in like knowing how that works. Yeah, I'd be down to try it. I don't know. Because yeah. like some, I, something relevant. Because like, okay, yeah, I got I got the honor capsule. Do you know how many times I played Malzahar? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not saying bring your back Malzahar. Bob. I'm not. Cajol did just retire. So, I'm not you saying know, like. I'm not saying like yeah they need to make five skins then you can choose a skin that you want for for it something like that. Yeah, I'm down for that. I'd be, I'd I be, think I'd that would be cooler. I'd be down for that, uh, and I think it'd be a great that. idea. But it's we we all know it's I not going to happen. Yeah. There's no world that happens. Yeah. They're not making five skins like that. I think it'd be a good idea because you know if they make like a really cool skin one for each role you get to pick one. I'd be cool, but it's not happening. I think something to do with queue time so it's like stuff like quality of life things that's going to make it more enjoyable for the people who don't ruin it yeah i i think that the there's been a bit too much focus i think on cosmetics and stuff in league of legends that people i definitely feel like the cosmetics is like what drove this company to be so successful and now it seems like the regular player base is like you know, not that excited as much as they could be. They just want quality of life, which I totally agree in the gameplay. The one final thing about quality of life that we can talk about that we can, of course, complain about is the removal of pinging people, pinging yourself, pinging allies, all this stuff. It is another direction in this topic of, like, instead of finding a way to reward people who are good at the game, they're finding ways to remove things from the people that are bad and, like, it's also removing things from people who just use a a mechanic normally. So, like, why do they remove the fact that you could ping your teammates? It's because toxic people were doing it to tilt your teammates and blah, blah, blah. It was, it was, it's a, it's a a thing they removed to remove negativity, but it also removed a bunch of positive stuff. And this is the thing that Riot is maybe messing up for a lot of people is that, like, you know, just because people made guns and it's a tool that's bad, like, there's other things that came out of these uh, inventions that are good. Like, I hate that I can't ping my teammates or uh, ultimate cooldowns or my own ulti cooldowns or ping that someone's respawning in five seconds. So very quick, I'm sure we're going to share a lot of the same sentiments. Just give your super, super brief thoughts about uh, removing pinging and stuff. Uh, I, as a jungler, why? Yeah. Like, I get it. <laughs> like, yeah, this talks about, like, have you, we are pinging there's only so many tools you can do, quickly communicate with, right? And limiting them is not the answer, right? Spam pinging someone in the same instant, yeah, you could lower the rate. That's a super easy way to code. You can code that very easily. They literally, they limit you after, what, seven spam pings or something? Six. Six. And then, right, six? Okay, I don't do it, so I don't know. But uh, whatever that limit is, like, just intervals, right? I, I don't need a ping more than, like, twice in a quick succession, right? But... That's not that toxic. But, they, uh, they didn't even try. Like, people who are chat banned, they can still ping, right? Why not just, like, remove pings from toxic people, then, if you have to? Or limit pings more. From to- like, there, there's so many ideas in the middle between removing it and, like, not doing anything, right? That they just went all the way and just removed That's it. That's not for nothing. Anyways. Yeah. Yep. Uh, any other any other thoughts on it though, Alistair? Just like how it's affecting your gameplay because you play the most ranked out of all of us. Like, does it actually? By far. Yeah. Um. Honestly, it's kind of made it more pleasant. Um. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like it, it's one of those ones where it's annoying, but at the same time, we played with it without it for years, so it's something like we got used to having that ability. Uh... So it's it's kind of just readapting to something that we used to not have, right? I think it's I think it would be better to limit pings like okay, 
if you're paying, like, they can just make it it's like, okay, if you're pinging a teammate or a summoner or whatever, you can do it maximum of twice. Sure. Because, yeah. okay. Something, some number. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, you can't ping your teammates dead, but you can still ping, you can still spam the rope the rope ping on them six times. You can still spam the MIA ping on them six times. Like, it, it's kind of one of those ones where it looks to me where it's kind of like they kind of half thought it through. So I think just lower lower the rate you can do it. Make it two or three. I do think, like I said, I do think it made a bit of a good change. It's making games a bit more pleasant. Where, you know, you're not, if you make one mistake, you don't just instantly get the chat filled with people flaming you. It's like, because, especially because I play with chat completely. Oh, oh wow. wow! He got wow, filtered he in got... real time. He, got... he said, "I play with chat censored." <laughs> yeah, that was actually perfectly uh, that timed. Was, I, we're keeping that in. Absolutely. Yeah. What, 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 in. what I missed. So your you... audio made like a a high pitched beep sound as you said, "I play with chat." <laughs> it sounded like yeah, you got, you got, it, you got muted it. in real time. Good. That was that was it. perfect. No, it's the uh, the, the, the adapter the adapter for my heads for my uh, headphones like unplugged uh, or something but yeah I, pl- I put the chat completely off so i don't I, I pretty much limit the amount of toxicity that comes in like towards me so ha- just having less of it kind of just makes it more enjoyable personally that makes sense i like I, that I, you know also, i've also turned off chat in a room and i never looked back <laughs> yeah i i turn off chat if people get honestly here's my thing is that i use pings so much regularly in my gameplay as both a jungler and on a or whatever right that I actually have to sometimes mute chat just so I can see pings. If people are typing too much, even if it's positive, even if it's nice and constructive, I'm like, I don't want to hear you guys' stupid thoughts. I need to see when I time this guy's summer spell. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I mute people for a different reason. But I want, I enjoy it. If people, my teammates use pings correctly, I enjoy it. I like to see it. I want to see that my top laner pinged. I don't care if you pinged the guy's flash ten times. If my top laner ping the guy's flash, I'm happy because then I have a general idea of when his flash is coming back up, right? So I honestly think it's for for the people that use it well, like it is really sad that they got a tool taken away from yeah. them. Um, Even just make it yeah. so the higher the higher level honor you are, the more the more pings you get. Wait, that's actually not a oh. bad idea. They could do yeah, a lot of things. honor level zero, yeah, you get zero pings. Hard, honor level five, you get six <laughs> pings. Like. No pings for you. There's a there's a lot of ideas here that we could do in the middle, like where, um, like I don't know, like Riot didn't even think about it. It's like what are they doing, sitting well, in their little offices, thinking about ideas, and they come up with none of the middle ground stuff to test for a few months. Well, I will say if they, I mean, with with Riot, if they do change it up, you know, which they have historically done sometimes, yeah. and they actually try different iterations, that's fine. But if they keep it this way for too long, then yeah, it's not, it's not acceptable, right? So, of the comp- the game companies in the world, Riot is one of the ones that actually sometimes try it. Try I think other things. it's a hundred percent true, and that's why we give them credit, and that's why we're allowed to like actually be happy sometimes about the things they do. But it's like, I don't know. I think when when you when you get to the point where it's like a couple random people on Reddit are obviously not that smart in general, but sometimes they come up with a good idea here now and then, or a couple of random people on a podcast come up with a good idea. It's like, you know, what's the point of the PBE? Just try it for a few months. It makes way more sense than completely annihilating pings, right? Do a little middle ground, right? But they never mm-hmm. try that stuff. So I think that's the next, uh, we're allowed to complain about that stuff while also complimenting the fact that, yep. hey, Alistair's games did get a bit more peaceful and there are reasons why some of the changes they made do make sense and work. So that's where we are, you know, right? Think a little bit harder. You're doing a good job. Your intentions are sometimes great, but think a little bit harder, you know, execute it a bit better. Maybe it's not that it's not that crazy. The ideas that we come up with that you could try. Um, yeah. So that's going to be it though for us. I think of this podcast, uh, we got any final things we want to talk about, any things we want to bring up uh, because I, I'm gone, I think, for most of next week. Maybe I can slip in for an episode if we really want to at the end. But I will be back the week after to talk about stuff post BDS GDS. But yeah. we do have their match and plays coming up. Yeah, what's up? One thing to mention, and I'll probably age poorly knowing my look. Um, I think that this year, unlike all the other years where we do have this conversation about play-ins and stuff, well, the reason we didn't mention much is like I don't think the play-in teams have it 
any chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that even like the Taiwanese team and the Vietnamese, especially the Vietnamese team, maybe number one Taiwan still can play. But like the the drop off in the old elite play-in teams, right from okay. the emerging regions, are they called? I mean, there's no Flash Wolves anymore. There's no Gambit. Like it's well, just it's just oh, been real rough players. since then. There's P. <laughs> There's PSG yeah. and stuff like so. So like the bottom oh, right, like true, Brazil, yeah. Brazil performed and like that's cool and all, but it, for the most part, like the performance is just the bottom got a little better, I think actually, because Brazil hadn't done much in years, right? And someone else did, I think Latin America North won a series or won a game. Someone won a game that's never won. Um, mm. It wasn't Latin America North. It was someone else. But the reality is, like, the elites, right, the ones who could take a game off Korea, just, like, don't. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, plan's not really that worth talking about, except for the BDS match, which we did talk about, right? Yeah. Um, so, if anyone's wondering why, even though planes is coming, <laughs> we don't talk about it much, just not going to waste your time. And if I'm wrong, then <laughs> clip it. <laughs> I mean, I just, I think it's good to just hope that we're wrong, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope you're yeah, wrong, yeah, I, I, but I'm still going to push for minor region worlds. I I think just go top four seeds. Of, we, we've had it before. I don't know. I, <laughs> the, the, I agree. That's why International Wildcard like, Tournament literally was the world, and no one watched it. No one cared. It was yeah. always sad. No, I agree. It's, it's It sucks, but anymore. like... It's one of those oh, you're ones. just saying, like, uh, even though it sucks, it's the best option. I mean, in my opinion, yeah. Because they're, like, the way I... Okay, that's like, fair. ...is putting the same amount of money into that that they're putting into all the other games for games that people aren't going to watch in the first place. And you're kind of just into this situation where you're either way you cut it, you're ending up with four major region teams, like, 99% of the time. So just make that... <laughs> and then have the best four Brazilian teams and Taiwanese teams and whatever and make them go at it. I think that'd be a lot more entertaining. Mm. I think there's a chance that that could honestly just happen. I, they've been minimizing and making the play in smaller and smaller each year that eventually it comes to the point where like, what is the point, right? This year, it feels like it's the most extreme of what's the point of plans, but out of any year and like all 13 years of League of Legends or whatever, right? So... I don't know what the solution is. I don't think there is a good solution, no matter how you cut it, right? It's just, there's just not a lot of interest in these minor regions. There's just decaying interest in the Western view audience because we're getting so much worse than the Asian teams, right? That little golden area in, what, like 2016 to 2019, where we actually could sometimes compete, we are far gone from that era, and we have been for a long time. So we'll see how it develops, but, like, I don't know. I can very see, like, this whole fourth place match between EU and NA, BDS versus GGS, that is a precursor of the Western teams becoming essentially the minor regions in a way, right? Like, it's, we, we are, we get this special match at the beginning to qualify one of our teams into the main event. That's like just, that's literally just play ins, but like with less words. So, that is that's too real, man. I didn't yeah. even think of that. Don't say so that around Matt Lions. Getting... Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's pretty sad because, you know, <laughs> Mad Lions can't even get out of play. So, like, we're going to get to a world where planes is diminishing and the West and East influence on the world's international tournaments is, in, is diminishing that. What if next year play-ins is just NA versus EU to qualify for the main event? <laughs> so hope that doesn't happen. Hope we get better, right? That's the solution is NA or EU has to get better at the game. We for can't the get worse, right? So there is, is a world where this is like, despite all the negativity, like there were hints of positivity at MSI where like the, our fourth place team now was like a pretty good second place team at the time. So who knows? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? We but said, we that said is... it until week two. And we're like, we know. Yeah. We sure know. Yeah, we know. I mean, I, I think we all knew before the tournament even started at MSI, right? But we just didn't want to. We didn't want to know. And we don't want to know this year either, but we know, right? It's Korea or China's winning <laughs> this year. <laughs> we know, guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, we still had to play at the games. We really don't know what happened. Maybe G2 makes another miracle. I mean, I don't know. I put it this way. Every year the World Cup comes around. There is no chance in hell North America or not North America USA does shit. 
past like the quarterfinals. <laughs> but we watch, and it's exciting. And I think that's like that's the thing that we have not figured out how to do in LCS because we spent all this time feeding maybe not a false promise because there was like 2016, 2017 TSM, right? Where maybe they could compete. Um, but we were just feeding the false narrative. So like people did have bad expectations. Yeah. Leaning into the underdog even harder, I guess. Yeah, Somehow like, there's, there's a lot of things. When we do get there. wins, it's yeah. a huge deal, right? And then like that's when it becomes hype. So I don't know. I think it's just like it will take a while, but there will be a whole set of league fans who, you know, weren't like us, grew up with like expectations. That's true. That's true. And, and they'll just you have know, fun watching the game modern, because it's still fun. Modern league fans would be like, what do you mean NA's bad? Isn't that how it's always been? <laughs> yeah, like, it, yeah. Wow, we, we won two games. That's amazing. We had a great <laughs> game this time. <laughs> I'm serious, though. That, that's yeah. like you watch. You watch like a lot of teams, right? Just because you support them, like you're not always the favorites. I think uh, I think that's a nice sentiment to wrap this up. That we as NA, we can still win by losing, right? We'll just we just have we win by having a good time, by having a sweet ass time, <laughs> having some good vibes. <laughs> not here for a long time, but we're here for a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we will we're gonna have the fastest airport run ever, but we are gonna be. We're going to be very comfortable. You know, the planes Look, rise to be it empty. I say jokingly, but, like, there are literal teams in North America that are, like, the Cubs or whatever the fuck. Was it the Bears or the Cubs? That, like, lost for 100 years plus. That was the Cubs. Fans and stuff. Hell yeah. We Look, yeah, people are still leech fans. All I'm saying is, like... Yeah. People are... So, I, oh, yeah, they are. So, so <laughs> I'm, all I'm saying is, like, if you do it right and you build the personalities and make them part of your community, right? In this case, the, U, the North American League community... Then it will be fine, dude. Reggie got absolutely giga stomped, and his team was still uber popular after season two worlds. He got like <laughs> actually, he pulled blue cards on like international stage, and it's still the most popular team. People didn't give a shit back then because the expectations, well, actually, the expectations were super high and delusional. But the point is, like, people can still cheer for you even if you suck. It's true. It's funny, funny to bring up Reggie for that. It's also funny that you said a hundred oh. years. Are you saying we're going to be, uh, and it's going to be bad for a hundred years? I can't wait, guys. I can't wait for my grandkids to be like, yeah, NA has always been bad, right? Remember in fucking 2040 where they almost got a turret against Korea? Like, I can't wait, guys. A hundred <laughs> years of NA being terrible. Let's go. Um, Go ahead. I think you got one last thing to say. Otherwise, I am going to wrap this bad boy up. I have I think to. We, I mentioned so Rip TSM last podcast, and I was like, "Did we forget to talk about that?" We definitely talked about it. No, they're, they're, we talked about it last part. Yeah, they're done. They're gone. They're out of here. They played their last game. They made a very touching farewell video, and I never want to see or think about them again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any last thing, Alistair, Kevin? I'm going to close it out. Otherwise, no. All right. That's going to do it for you on the podcast. Uh, it's been good to have you guys back. I'm really excited for Worlds. Uh, but try not to be too toxic. You can't ping anybody anymore, so it's going to be a lot easier. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> Peace. I like that. <laughs>